Hey everyone, welcome back to AshDev. In the last part, we covered the basics of animation. In this video, we'll implement the animations with our character controller script and also learn about the blend tree and root motion. So let's get started. Previously, we added walk and idle animations. Now it's time to add running animations, but instead of following the same transition approach, which can look abrupt and hard, we'll use something called blend trees to create smoother transitions. Right-click in the animator and create a new blend tree. Blend trees allow seamless transitions between animations using a float variable. There are two types of blend trees, 1D and 2D. In a 1D blend tree, the parameter changes value to transition between animations in a list. For example, we can smoothly transition between idle, walk, and run animations based on the character's movement speed. In a 2D blend tree, there are two parameters instead of one, allowing for transitions not only between forward movements, but also sideways movements. This makes it ideal for more complex animation setups, like strafing and directional movement. There are three types of 2D blend trees, but we'll dive into those in another tutorial. For now, let's focus on setting up our animations using a 1D blend tree. First, you need to select the parameter for the blend tree transition. Create a new parameter of type float and name it move speed. Then select this parameter in the inspector and add the three animations, idle, walk, and run in the correct order to the blend tree. Next, set the threshold values, but firstly disable the Auto Compute Thresholds option. The threshold determines the parameter value at which the transition from the current animation to the next occurs. For idle, set the threshold to zero, as this animation should play when the character isn't moving. For walking, set the threshold to five, corresponding to our walk speed. For running, set the threshold to 10, matching our sprint speed. In the blend tree, you can also set the animation playing speed next to the threshold. For now, we'll use the default speed. The Compute Thresholds option allows you to automatically calculate thresholds based on various methods, such as different velocity options or using angular speed. And this data is taken from the animation's root motion data. This helps in fine-tuning the transitions. With our blend tree setup complete, now let's implement the animations with the character controller. First, in your character controller script, create an animator variable under the references header. Then in the ground movement function, set the move speed float parameters value to the current speed multiplied by the maximum of the absolute values of move input and turn input. Let me break this down for you. We first use the speed variable to determine if the character is sprinting or walking. Then we multiply this speed by the maximum value of the move input or the turn input. This approach helps us figure out if the character is moving or not, ensuring that the character is animated correctly. The reason we use the maximum of the move input and turn input is that if either of these inputs is non-zero, it means the character is moving and the appropriate animation should be played. By using the absolute values, we make sure that it doesn't matter whether the character is moving in the positive or negative direction along the axis. We only care about the speed magnitude. Once you've implemented this in your script, go back to the Unity editor, assign the animator to player controller, and delete the idle and walking state, and connect the blend tree to the entry node, then check out how it's working. Now our animations are playing according to the move speed of the player. There's also a better way for setting animator parameters. Create a new header and name it Animations. In this section, create an integer variable called AnimMoveSpeed. Now create a new function named setupAnimator. In this function, set the value of AnimMoveSpeed using animator.string to hash with your parameter's name as an argument. This will create a hash ID for your parameter's name, then replace this with the string value. Hash ID is simply an ID representing the string we passed in, making it more efficient and less prone to mistakes. Instead of rewriting the parameter name repeatedly, you can just use the hash ID. Finally, Make sure to call the setupAnimator function in the start method to initialize the hash IDs. Once you have done this, your animations should work correctly. If there are any issues, double check the parameter name spelling to ensure it matches exactly. Now, let's set up the jumping animations. Start by creating three new states in the animator, jump, in air, and landing. Create a transition from the ground movement blend tree to the jump state. 
then from jump to in-air, and from in-air to landing. To complete the cycle, create a transition from landing back to the blend tree. This setup covers the entire jump cycle that occurs when the player presses the jump key. Additionally, we need another transition from the blend tree to the in-air state to account for cases where the character gets in the air without jumping, such as falling from a height. And lastly, don't forget to provide all the animation references for each state. Now to make the transition from the blend tree to jump happen, create a new parameter of type trigger and name it jump, and untick has exit time for this for no delays. The transition from jump to in-air will occur automatically since we'll tick the has exit time checkbox for this transition, ensuring that once the jump animation finishes, the in-air animation will start. For the in-air to landing transition, we need another parameter because the in-air animation will be looping. This loop accounts for varying fall durations. If you haven't set the in-air animation to loop yet, do enable it. Now, create a new parameter of type bool and name it grounded. For the landing animation to run, the grounded parameter should be true, so that the landing animation will play as soon as the character touches the ground. The transition from landing to the blend tree will also happen automatically, because we'll tick the has exit time, ensuring the landing animation doesn't stop midway. Lastly, for the blend tree to in-air transition, set the condition so that grounded should be false, and untick has exit time for this one too. With these adjustments, the transitions are set up to handle jumping, falling, and landing smoothly based on whether the character is grounded or in the air. Now, open your character controller script. Under the animations header, create two integer variables for the jump and grounded parameters. In the setup animator function, convert the parameter names to hash IDs using animator.string to hash. Next, in the vertical force calculation function, set the grounded parameter based on whether the character is grounded. When the character is grounded, set the grounded boolean to true, and when it's not, set it to false. Additionally, check for the jump input, and when the player presses the jump button, trigger the jump parameter. But it's not looking how we expected, we'll fix it in some time. Now, let's add some additional animations, like an attack. Start by downloading the attack animation and adjusting the settings as mentioned in the previous part. Create another parameter of type trigger for the attack animation. Next, create a new state in the animator and name it attack. Drag and drop the attack animation into this state. Then create a transition from the blend tree to the attack state. Set this transition to occur on the attack trigger. For the transition back from the attack state to the blend tree, tick the has exit time to ensure the attack animation plays fully before returning to the blend tree. Now let's get back to the script. Create an integer variable for the attack parameter and set up its hash ID in the setup animator function. Next, create a new function named attack to trigger the attack animation. In this function, check for your desired key for attacking and trigger the attack parameter. Call this function in update and return to the editor to play test the game. You might notice that the character controller isn't moving with the character's animation. To fix this, enable root motion in the animator. Root motion allows the character to move along with the animation. However, enabling it requires some additional settings. Go to the animation settings where you'll find three options. Root transform rotation, root transform position Y, and root transform position XZ. Each setting controls how root motion is applied in its specific field. Each of these settings has a bake into pose checkbox. When this option is enabled, the character's animation will not affect that particular transform property. In other words, the player won't move with the character, which is useful if you're modifying that property through code. For instance, we change the rotation through code when the character turns, the Y position when the character jumps, and the XZ position when the character moves. Therefore, enable Bake into Pose for all three properties to ensure that these movements are controlled by your script rather than the animation. Each of these root motion settings also has a based upon property. This property determines how the character should react to the animation. To properly demonstrate this, I am disabling the bake into pose because else it will get back to previous position like it did previously, 
but keep in mind it also works with the Bake into Pose enabled. The first option, Original, uses the animation's original data to adjust the character's position and rotation according to the animation. This means the character will move exactly as the animation dictates, without any additional modification. The second option, Center of Mass, uses the character's center of mass as the reference point. It places the character's center of mass at the same point as the center of mass in the animation, ignoring the animation's rotation and position data. For the Y-axis position, there is an additional option called Feet. This option is similar to Center of Mass mode. It uses the character's feet as the reference point, ensuring that the character's feet align with the feet position in the animation. This is particularly useful because the character's center of mass is typically at its midpoint, and using this mode prevents the character from sinking below the ground. In this case, since the character's center of mass is at its mid, and using center of mass mode would cause the character to go below the ground, we should use the feet mode for the y-axis position. This ensures that the character's feet remain correctly aligned with the ground during the animation, providing a more realistic and stable movement. Now, since we don't need any ground animations to change the player's position, enable Bake into Pose for all three root motion settings for these animations. For the Based Upon setting, we want to maintain complete control over the player's position through our player controller script, so we won't use the original option. This is because the animation might slightly alter the character's position. For example, the idle animation might move the character slightly upwards, causing the character to repeatedly shift into the falling state since it becomes ungrounded. To avoid this, set the Y position to Feet. This ensures the character's feet remain grounded and aligned with the animation, preventing any unintentional shifts that cause the falling state to trigger. For the rotation, use the Body Orientation option, which means the character's rotation will match the player's rotation controlled by the script. For the XZ position, use Center of Mass mode to maintain control over the character's horizontal movements through the script while still respecting the character's mass center for stability. Now, let's configure the root motion settings for the jump animations, including landing and in-air. Enable Bake into Pose for all three transforms and set the Based Upon modes, same as the ground animations. But for the jump animation, disable Bake into Pose for Position Y and use the original option for the Based Upon setting. This will allow the player to move along with the animation. For the attack animation, we want the character to move in all axes. So keep the Bake into Pose disabled for both Position Y and Position XZ, and use the original option for the Based Upon setting. This ensures that the player moves according to the animation. However, for rotation, enable Bake into Pose to maintain the player's orientation as controlled by the player controller script. These settings allow the jump and attack animations to effectively control the character's movement while ensuring the collider's orientation remains consistent with the player's inputs. And that's it for this tutorial. We've covered how to integrate and configure animations. I hope you found this guide helpful. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your fellow developers. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more tutorials.